Hi. What I have here is a Marconi 2305 modulation meter. It is capable of measuring modulation depth of amplitude, frequency, and phase modulated signals from a few hundred kilohertz all the way up to 2 gigahertz. And the vintage of this meter is around late 70s and early 80s. As usual, I bought this off eBay. As you can see here, it's not in the best shape it can be in. Now, if you search on eBay, you can see quite a few of these fully functional Marconi 2305s at the moment, and they are quite inexpensive as well. Of course, I got mine quite cheap, given the damages this unit has. For example, the power switch is uh, unfortunately snapped off, and uh, the thread on the RF output end connector looks like damaged as well. Presumably it was the result of something hitting against the front panel and causing the damage we see here. And also as you can see the LCD frame here is also cracked. And uh, at the uh, right side of the panel it's even more uh, dramatic here. As you can see that uh, the BNC connector here for the LF output is also damaged. And this is somewhat uh, uh, more severe and uh, this thing is totally bent in. And uh, the level control here is missing a cap as well. Now, according to my understanding, the LF side is simply just the demodulated uh, output. So the damage as you see here probably does not affect the core functionality of this modulation meter. Now, I'd like to power it down and uh, see if it works and show you guys some of the core functionality of this meter. But uh, the power switch here is uh, damaged and when I tried to plug it in and uh, power it down earlier, I could not get it to switch on. So I think I will use this opportunity to do a teardown and uh, fix these issues that we see here first and then I will do some demonstration in a future video and hopefully the issues we see here are just uh, some cosmetics. Okay, so let me remove the top cover and uh, we'll see what's inside. And here we can see the inside of this 2035. And of course there are a lot of boards here, but uh, what is under this aluminum cover is the actual uh, analog front end. And uh, here are some of the digital circuitry towards the back. And of course the power supply is on the other side. And we'll take a closer look. But uh, this Marconi uh, modulation meter really is just a glorified shortwave receiver. And uh, in fact it's a front end is entirely uh, analog. And it's a super hydrodyne uh, receiver here. So we will, of course, open it up and take a look. By the look of it, of course, um, you know, this unit hasn't been tampered with and it still has the original uh, seal from the Marconi here. But of course, we're going to uh, open it up and take a look. Oh, before we continue, let's take a look at uh, what I forgot to mention. And these units and quite a few of uh, the HP unit also has this feature. And look at this. So we can slide out some of these uh, information cards and uh, for the some of this uh, um, features that you can use on the meter it's actually laid out on these cards so which is very neat you don't have to uh, memorize this or have your manual with you all the time and you can see we have uh, two of these cards here so these are uh, some instructions on how to use this this specific card is for the GPIB looks like and the functionality here. So anyways, just want to show you that. So what I'm going to do, I think, is uh, going to turn this uh, around so we can have a better look inside. And of course, our main focus of this video is besides taking a look at the inside construction is to try to fix the front panel here. And by the look of it, it looks like we have to uh, remove some of the side screws from the front panel to in order to take it out and for their services unit. So let me uh, reorient the unit and we'll take a closer look. And now I have removed all the screws here and also the screws on this side, so the bracket here. And we can take it off and uh, take a quick look here. So let's uh, take a look at RF section here. 
Well, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So let's uh, take a closer look here. And uh, unfortunately, I have to put this angle a little bit higher so I can we can see the entire circuitry here. But I'm going to post some of the uh, close-up pictures on my website. So for those who are interested, please go and check it out. So here I'm going to uh, attempt to, to kind of show you what uh, all the components here is about. Now, the uh, end connector is over here and the signal comes in through this coax cable into this first unit here. And this is our attenuator. And if you can see here, we have all these uh, little bit, uh, little round uh, cans. At first, if you look at it, it looks like some kind of amplifier. Actually, these are not. These are some of the, uh, the high frequency relays. So these are used to switch in and out some of these uh, resistive divider network to attenuate the input signal. And uh, if we follow the signal flow, and you can see that the output from the input attenuator goes through this board. This is actually a sampling gate uh, on this uh, tiny riser board, and I assume that uh, the parameters needs to be very carefully matched, so that's why they have a separate board here. Now, uh, this entire uh, unit here, the section here, is our mixer board. So basically the high frequency comes in and uh, mixed with the signal comes into your IF uh, going out. So what is feeding into that uh, mixer board is this coax cable coming out from this voltage controlled oscillator board. And as you can see that this is a relatively large board because our integration is uh, relatively low here. And I wanted to keep a closer look at the, these feed-through capacitors, and that's how the signals get fed from one side to the other through this uh, shielded uh, uh, boxes here. And what is generating the stable uh, reference uh, oscillation frequency is this reference oscillator box, and uh, here we have a oven-controlled oscillator in the middle. And uh, down here we have this uh, programmable divider uh, board, and uh, this this one up here is a counter limiter board. And uh, on this side, I'm not seeing our FM detector and AM detector board, so I suspect that those are probably on the other side, which we'll take a look later. But now let's uh, take a look while we have this side up. Let's take a look at what's inside these uh, uh, digital boards, presumably. And it's interesting to see as these kind of instrument age, uh, the plastic parts actually became very brittle. And I, I in fact, I, I was just touching this piece, and as you can see, this piece totally uh, crumbles and uh, basically just uh, come right apart. So um, anyway, so that's something you need to uh, pay attention when servicing these kind of older units. And this is one of the first uh, boards I took it out. And uh, on the manual, it says it's a microprocessors board, one of uh, at least part of it. But uh, this one actually, if you look at the chip here, is M5L8135P. This is actually a parallel port uh, function digital chip of some kind. So this is a part is handling some kind of uh, parallel communications here. Aha. Uh -huh. So the second board here is actually our microprocessor board. As you can see here, we have the AD85. This is our main processor. And all these uh, uh, chips up here are the EEPROMs supporting this uh, processor. And uh, we do have a, uh, I think it's a 8x2 uh, RAM chip here that is uh, the storing the, uh, the runtime information from the, uh, the program here. And the next board up, uh, according to the manual, is our counter circuitry. And uh, of course, it contains this main chip. Of course, I can't find any information on it. So it could actually be a custom chip. I'm not entirely sure. And the last board in those uh, vertically uh, plugged in board section is this uh, voltmeter board. And in fact, this entire thing is uh, mostly analog. And as you can see here, we have uh, some of the op amps. And uh, uh, what I can see also has this uh, MOX here. 
Anyway, so this is the voltmeter board. By the way, while I was uh, putting the top boards together, I noticed something. And you can see here we have a header that this header is not plugged into anything here. And it appears just to be dangling. Now, if you look at uh, the back here, which I will show you in uh, just a bit, but uh, we have this uh, opening here. So it looks like this is pro probably one of the options that uh, this board does not have. Anyway, thought that was just interesting to point out. And now I just uh, flipped over this unit and we'll see uh, after removing this section of the uh, shielding top what is uh, underneath there. So here I have just removed the shielding cover from the bottom side of the unit and you can see we have this portion is our AM detector. Now the AM detector, uh, the working principle is a little bit complicated but uh, to uh, put it very simply uh, is basically we removed the carrier component and the output is basically through a active filter and uh, we have the output signal proportional to the audio signal's uh, uh, amplitude. So that's how the amplitude detector works. To the left of this uh, AM detector board is our FM detector board, which is responsible for detecting both FM and uh, PM signals. Again, the actual principle of operation is relatively complex, and I would recommend those who are interested take a look at the service manual. And that's one good thing about buying these kind of uh, old equipment, is that in most cases, the service manual is readily available and uh, you can actually learn quite a bit from the uh, service manual by carefully examining each component of the system. But at a very uh, high level though, this is really just a frequency to voltage uh, conversion that precisely measure the incoming frequency variation, turn them into voltage measurement so that we can detect the, both in terms of phase shift and the frequency deviation. So among the field boards that uh, are left here, and this is a LF amplifier, basically to amplify the low frequency signal. And really that's just the audio signal after the demodulation. So you can use a, say, earphone or some audio amplifier further to uh, listen to the actual demodulated signal. And the board up here is our LF filter board. So this one basically provides filtering of uh, the various uh, frequency bands in our audio frequency. And finally, we have some uh, latches uh, in this section of the board. And uh, the board back here, this one, if you wonder what this is, actually that's just the back plane of those uh, plugged in boards that I showed you on the other side. And by the way, not sure if you can see this, but uh, here is a date stamp here is February 1988. So this one, well, actually there's another uh, stamp that is uh, October 1987. I'm not sure which one is which, but either way, it's uh, in the late 1980s, which I thought uh, at the beginning, um, this one was actually at the beginning of uh, the 80s. I, I guess they had manufactured this for a long period, period of time. And also you can notice the uh, the date time on the chips here. And most of those has an 87. So I guess this one, uh, this specific unit was made back in 87 or 88. Okay, so now you have uh, taken a look inside this unit and uh, saw all the, uh, the functional blocks of uh, each portion of the circuit that makes this uh, modulation meter work. Now, uh, if you remember, our primary goal of this video is actually to replace the uh, broken switch and uh, this BNC connector, at least here. And uh, so now I'm going to attempt to do that so that uh, uh, hopefully in the next video we can take a look at the performance of this meter and uh, to take a deeper look at it. And I took off the front panel and off camera and there are so many screws here and it's a little bit of uh, awkward to do it on camera. But anyway, so the front panel came off and as you can see here, um, and uh, this also is the panel. I took it off because uh, this board actually has the, uh, the frame. If you recall that the LCD frame was broken and I kind of glued it and uh, let it dry here. But anyway, so this is uh, the LCD 
and uh, this and the, those are some of the chips here and interestingly you can see this one is a ceramic and uh, I'm not entirely sure what it's doing here but anyway so this is the LCD board and so while that's drying I I am um, uh, replacing this uh, broken uh, BNC connector here so I took it off and um, well this one is actually using a uh, coax uh, mounted which um, for the LF the low frequency it really doesn't matter so and of course I don't have this uh, uh, this kind of uh, BNC connector here so I just use the standard BNC and it's a little bit smaller so it doesn't really cover all these uh, original you can see that uh, when the nut was on it uh, with a little bit of paint chipped off, but because of this, are, these are smaller, so it doesn't cover that. But anyway, so it should uh, behave exactly the same. So I'm going to solder that on uh, momentarily, and uh, I probably will do that off camera as well. But uh, I'm just going to solder this here, and uh, uh, that should be good to go here. So now on this end, this is our broken switch, and uh, so this is a uh, uh, double double pull double throw uh, switch and in fact it's only using one side of it so I looked in my component drawer and I found a uh, I found one of the similar vintage look at this so this one is uh, in 19 uh, 1988 uh, the 12th week and this switch should fit exactly the same as uh, the original switch so I'm going to switch that off I mean I'm going to uh, switch this one in rather uh, and uh, and now I look at the, uh, the the end connector here so the end connector is also uh, in a coax and it's a special tool to uh, make this kind of a cable connector mate but uh, I don't have the two now I did take a look even though this is a little bit of damage in fact it doesn't quite affect uh, the connector to be screwed on so I'm going to leave this as is uh, at least for now and just gonna replace the switch and uh, this uh, this uh, RF uh, sorry the LF output connector here so I'm going to do that really quick and uh, we'll show you when I'm done so after changing out this uh, broken BNC connector and uh, the uh, broken power switch everything is put back together and of course I managed to put the uh, power switch uh, upside down so meaning that uh, turning on now is going uh, downwards and uh, this position is actually the off position uh, just a minor detail and um, I don't feel like uh, opening it up again uh, just to change the orientation of the switch maybe next time when I do decide to change this uh, RF input and connector I might uh, uh, flip the switch upside down again and by the way for this uh, LF uh, potentiometer remember this cover is missing so I did go ahead and uh, 3d printed a cap here so this cap actually snaps right in place like so and while I had the, uh, the front panel out, I also straightened the, this frame, so it looks slightly better than what was before. And you can still see the crack here, but uh, nevertheless, the whole thing get uh, pushed in and now it's leveled. So I think right now we can power it down and uh, see uh, whether or not it works. And as you can see that uh, this unit powered on with no problem and just from this uh, uh, the display here it looks like everything is functioning correctly now just to be sure I'm just going to supply a RF signal into this unit and uh, we'll take a quick measurement um, but I'm not going to do a whole lot of uh, measurement in this video which I'm going to uh, do a more detailed measurement video uh, in the near future and uh, to test it briefly, I just powered up my HP 8642B. So now I'm going to set the frequency uh, to 2 GHz, which is the upper limit of this Marconi 2305. So frequency 2 GHz. And I'm going to set the output to roughly uh, 10 dBm. So the output amplitude, I'm going to set to 10 dBm. 
and uh, as you can see, we can indeed see the uh, the frequency here showing to gigahertz. And right now we're showing uh, this is actually for FM. Let, let's just do a quick AM modulation just to for sanity check here. So I'm going to put it to AM. Now it's uh, not modulated, so it's uh, showing zero. So I'm going to turn on the AM modulation. Uh, let's turn it on. So right now it's set to 50%. And as you can see, that indeed it's around 50%. So I think this uh, is now a functioning meter. And again, as uh, I mentioned earlier in my next video, I'm going to do a little bit more thorough measurements and show you the capability of this meter. So I hope you uh, enjoyed this teardown and uh, learned something new. If you liked the video, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and remember to subscribe, share, and I will catch up with you next time.